hello everybody welcome back to the bison workshop i'm bob and today i just want to kind of go over some uh, stuff that i've done to this uh, big bear 400 from my son's christmas gift and uh, just kind of show what all i've done uh, i've got a little looseness in the steering wheel or the handlebars it's a lot of slop so we're going to try to See if we can't fix that. Uh, I've got plenty of them pieces down there on the bottom. So I think it's the splines that's loose. So I've got a couple of them. One off of this one. And I've got a couple more underneath the bench that maybe we can tighten that up a little bit. Now the ball joints that I put on this thing are god awful tight. Um, I don't like the new ball joints I got. Uh, hopefully they'll loosen up because I'm telling you this steering is really stiff to move so I'm not real sure about them ball joints um, they're just really tight uh, when I was installing them and putting them in the back in the bike I couldn't hardly get them to push to straighten up so they'd go in the hole for the a, a arm so they're pretty damn stiff so hopefully over time they'll loosen up. If they had just put a fit, grease fitting on them, that grease would have loosened it up. But they don't put grease fittings on nothing anymore. So, but anyway, I got the hand warmers uh, installed. I got the winch installed. I went ahead and gave him my winch that I bought for mine, uh, simply because I just didn't feel like taking mine out uh, there's a lot to it, the wiring and stuff, and I just went ahead and put it in this one, and then later on down the road, if I get the money, I'll just go ahead and get me another one. But it works off of this button, and it works off of a remote, which is in the toolbox, so if you ever need it, it's in the toolbox. Um, I'm trying to locate an owner's manual for this. Um, I got this owner's manual for the uh, 350 and decided to trade it off and uh, I decided to keep it because not many people care about these uh, owner's manuals anyway, but I like to have every owner's manual for everything that I have. I have the original one for mine, uh, but if somebody out there has got one of these Moto 4 uh, YFM 350ERG and you're interested in doing a trade, I'll trade you this owner's manual for a Big Bear 400 owner's manual. Um, I'd like for that to go with it because I did get him a helmet and I'd like for him to have the owner's manual because he is new to four wheeling. So it's nice for him to have information. So, without any more to say, I'll show you what all I've done so far. The only thing that, that bothers me about this is the carburetor. Uh, when I first started, I put the original, well, I started off with a Chinese carburetor. And, no, I'm wrong. I started off with the original that I had half-ass rebuilt years ago and it was leaking so i decided to just take it out and try the chinese carburetor that i had just bought brand new to put on it as a backup well it was it, it i couldn't get it to rev up and uh it was stumbling all over itself so i decided to take the original makuni and rebuild it using the parts out of the Chinese carburetor and that worked for mine it didn't work for this uh, we still have an issue with that um, the Chinese carburetor you can't adjust because they've got that thing blocked off with a brass pin and I hate drilling them things out so I'd just rather put the original back on it and work with it because the original is always the best one to go with 
So, uh, I did get a neutral light, but you, you have to finagle it. It's, it's kind of uh, hit or miss. So, I'm hoping that since this motor hasn't been in operation for probably about five years all total together, uh, I think when I got this motor and this frame on that uh, Buckmaster that I got, it uh, he told me that it had set in the field for three years. Well, this motor has set for two years with me, so that gives it about at least five years. So I'm just hoping that over time it'll work, you know, as you work in a shifter. And I think it's getting better. I think what it is is just the contacts just need to be rubbed to get better contact. So we do have a reverse light and neutral light, uh, but you have to mess with the shifter to kind of get it where it's at. Uh, hopefully over time that'll straighten up. But I did take the whole thing apart on the side of the motor and everything looked good and everything worked properly. Look at that Grand Central Station out here today. Getting near hunting season, guys. Uh, I'm glad mine's working okay, because uh, I'm going to be going hunting here. Uh, I'm going to go over to my buddy's house on the 20th and start going in and getting my stand ready and cleaning out around the tree. Um, I like to clean out around the tree about three feet all the way around the tree wherever I'm going to set. That way if I need to sneak behind the tree I got no leaves to step on to make noise as I go around the tree to hide from whatever it is that I'm uh, stalking. So Plus, I have to have enough room to put all my stuff. I, I, when I go hunting, I move in. <laughs> I got a big bag that I carry all my snacks and extra ammo and accessories, uh, calls and uh, hand warmers and extra cap, toboggan, extra gloves. I carry it all. <laughs> and then I got my homemade chair that my uncle made before he died. And uh, so I got that to one of them that leans against the tree. But uh, anyway, enough of that. So we do have neutral light. And she starts up really good. But here's where I have a problem. See that? When I go to push it, it wants to fall on itself. See? So, I'm not sure what's causing that. It straightens up it straightens up when I use the choke. So that's a sign of something, and I'm not sure what that sign is. But uh, when it'll run better on choke, that's usually an air problem. So um, I didn't see no cracks in none of the hoses or the, the um, intake or anything like that and the breather box. I, I didn't see any issues with that. It's got a brand new uh, filter in it, and so I'm not real sure what's causing that. If anybody's got any ideas, let me know. All right, so now we have where I can turn this knob. See what I mean? It's... Uh, See, I got to mess with the pedal to get it to go into neutral. 
it's there the lights just not coming on so I'm pushing down on the pedal and now I have it so I'm just hoping that works out over time all right then I put the hand warmers on it uh, this was more for me than for my son simply because you know he's not going to ride this thing very often i'm probably going to ride it more keeping it exercised than he is so if i want to use this one i have a hand warmer because i'm i'm telling you i'm a big puss when it comes to cold i cannot handle cold weather so i have to make it so it makes me happy too all right so then i put led lights on the front and I could not get the pigtail on this one over here to work correctly because the contacts were sunk in the plastic so much that the contact on the bulb would not reach it. And there was really no way to fix that except to go into some extensive freaking repair. And I wasn't prepared to do that. So I just made an aluminum plate to cover the original hole and mounted these led lights on it but because these are only one filament meaning it's not 1157 it's uh 1156 which is one contact so all these bulbs work on one so i had to get these in order to do high and low beam so when i turn it on to low the yellow ones come on and that's bright all right and then when i go to turn it on the high beam all of them come on and the low beams go out so that'll work and they're pretty damn bright so yellow is low beam and high beam is all all the bright ones so then i put the winch in there and this was a little more than i wanted to spend on a winch this is a 2000 pound winch uh but the thing that uh turned me on to this was the fact that it had this box with the double solenoid in it and it was remote controlled because there may be times where when you are out in the field, I'm never going to put myself in that position. But there are people out there that will put themselves in a position to where they have to use a winch to get themselves unstuck. Um, so there's times where you may have to be away from the four-wheeler and operate the winch at the same time. Well, that requires two different people. So if you're by yourself and you need to guide a line while you're cranking it in or pulling the uh, cable in to tighten it or whatever, I can be away from the four-wheeler and use the remote control to make that happen. So it's just a convenience thing. And yeah, it's a little more than I wanted to put on this, but my son's worth it, I reckon. <laughs> So, um, we already know about the mud flaps. I put them on. I went ahead and cut this out to uh, allow for the pedal. And uh, I did fix the shifter. Uh, most of the play was coming from this part right here. Uh, and I forgot to put paint on it. Um, this here stud was loose in that hole. So basically I just held the thing in tight and welded it. So now I've got just about all the play. In fact, it's still got less play than what mine's got. So the balls are, are actually working. It was just this part right here. And this part wasn't tight for some reason. I thought I had it tight, but I didn't. So this was moving and this was moving. The rods do have movement or the contacts do have movement, but no more than normal i guess a little more than normal 
but it's tighter than it was so then we put new tires on it i'm not real sure i like these tires uh these are going to tear up some ground uh i went with these over here on mine and i like those they're nice tires they don't tear up a lot they still do tear up but not as much these these are diggers uh, but hindsight's 2020. All right, so then we put rear disc brakes on it with a foot pedal brake and master cylinder. And the front brakes operate off of this one. Now I'm in the process of changing this from a right hand to a left hand simply because it's awkward to be uh, messing with this thing while you're riding it just it just feels awkward for some reason for me uh, but we're we're going to change it from we're trying to we're trying to change it from a left a right hand to a left hand uh, and what I did I took the uh, one off of the uh, the Polaris and I painted it and made it look all nice but that paint will not dry that paint is just as tacky as can be and I painted this yesterday rust oleum is slipping their paint is junk anymore. Clo uh, nozzles get clogged up before the can's done. Uh, I had one that the nozzle was clogged up and wouldn't spray right out of the box, uh, brand new. Never did get to use it, so I just wasted $7 worth of paint. Uh, and I've had that happen several times, and it's usually Rust-Oleum. Now, Rust-Oleum used to be my go-to paint, but I'm getting to the point where I think the dollar store paints better. So, <laughs> go figure, right? <clears throat> oh, and I also put a uh, fuse panel, switched fuse panel right here. And basically because I wasn't using if I can get the light to set the deal. Uh, basically because I wasn't using this because this bolt is for that plastic piece that goes to the fender. So since I made mine out of tread aluminum, I didn't need this anymore. So I just mounted a plate, made a plate to pop rivet this uh, fuse panel to it. And all these are on switched. So I ran all these terminals and soldered this wire through that. And it's a brown wire and it goes to the brown wire on the switch itself. Uh, the red wire is positive at all times. The brown wire is positive only when the switch is on. So all these are going to be switched. So right now I've got the hand warmers on that. And anything else that I need to add, I've got three more fuses that I can use to add whatever he wants added. So I've got a few little details that needs to be done. Um, number one, I'm going to try to 3D print some uh, new caps to put on those uh, swing arm bolts to cover them up. Uh, I did ride this yesterday. Of course, right now it's raining. Uh, we got some rain out here. little wet out there today I just hope it don't flood 
Anybody who's followed my channel knows that's a good possibility. Uh, but anyway, that's where we're at on the Big Bear 400 Restore. Now, I didn't do a whole lot of work on camera simply because I, I'm just burnt out on it and I just want to get it done. And, you know, if, if I can show you what, what I've done, if you can't figure out what I've done by me showing you what I've done, then maybe you need to learn what you're looking at when you're looking at what I'm doing. Uh, I can take and look at something and know exactly how to do it just by looking at it. Um, not everybody's got that trait, but uh, I'm not. I'm not doing videos for all the dummies. <laughs> anyway. But we got the seat yet to do. I do want to take these racks back off and repaint them. I may not have to take it off. I might be able to just slide paper underneath here, all underneath of it, and just paint the top. Because the bottom actually looks pretty decent. So it just needs the top painted. So we may just do that. Uh, this one here, I've got to take it back off because this part right here, I didn't get it bent up far enough it needs to bend this part needs to come up and this right here is where the bend is and you can see where it's bent right there so this needs to come up on that end and the rest of it looks pretty good i got that pretty straight so we just need to bend this up i tried to do it on the bike but it just wasn't happening <laughs> it doesn't want to move so when I try to do it, it tries to bend this part too. So I'm going to have to put put this a board underneath of it here and a board underneath of it here and then hit it right there so that it'll uh, straighten it back up. Uh, I hate messing with these racks, but they're so hard to get to them two bolts. But anyway... I got to take this master cylinder and paint it yet. Uh, we got our RPM and uh, I think it's a timer. Maintenance uh, thing. I don't ever use it. I want to use it for the RPMs so I know how how uh, how much RPMs I've got. I think that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this ought to serve my son well. I think that will end this part of or end this series on the uh, Big Bear 400. Uh, the only thing I got left to do to this is like minor stuff like putting the uh, swing arm caps on it and the seat cover and I've already covered a seat so a couple weeks ago so I don't need to show how to cover a seat because it's exactly the same process if you want to see how how I covered the seat just go back in my videos about a week or two and watch that one on the Moto 4 uh, Yamaha Moto 4 seat so that that's going to end this uh series on the big bear 400 now i can start moving on to other stuff um I, it ain't like i ain't got a lot of stuff to do i gotta organize this shop yet again after this job because i've got stuff everywhere <laughs> uh, i hate when it gets like that man but i do it every time so anyway don't forget to like share comment subscribe you guys have a good one later